And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our third speaker of the day, uh, Professor Sangbei Kim from MIT. I'm sure many of you know him for his work on, on Cheetah and you know, Mini Cheetah and the Sticky Bot, um, many landmark designs covered in, in hundreds of media articles, best numerous best paper awards, including the uh, TMAC, trans Transactions on Mechatronics. So uh, with that, Sangbei, please take it away. You are muted, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for um, inviting me. Uh, it's great to uh, participate this. Uh, do you guys see the full screen? We're seeing the speaker notes. Oh, okay. I'll swap there again. Yes. All right. Success. All right. Thank you so much. So let's, uh, because time is limited, I'll just go ahead. So uh, I'll just play the video of that like fits the title. Uh, most of my talk is about proprioceptive actuation, but this is a, a, some sort of a unique combination of our technology that uh, enable virtual magnet demo. So uh, I want you to think about what's going on over there and I'll explain later. So title is a proprioceptive actuation and extraceptive uh, context sensing uh, for high bandwidth reaction. Um, I will make an introduction short because Bram uh, already talked about this. You know, our conventional technologies for manufacturing rigid object, manufacturing soft object is already hard because the, it doesn't fit with the conventional uh, robotics technology regime. And uh, typically very high penis and then very low, no collision allowed. In the real world, the collisions are happening all the time. Even if you're just trying to uh, grab a key from your, your pocket, this collision is happening all the time. Accuracy, we always impressed by human accuracy, but it's nothing like a, a robot accuracy. It's not like some millimeter accuracy. We're actually accurate about something else. We're still trying to figure out how to, uh, to develop a controller. But in terms of hardware, we actually need to develop something that can handle impact, absorb energy, uh, so it can do fast interaction with the environment. So I've been working on uh, hardware design paradigm shift from grounded structured environment where robot can just finish all most of the work, not all the work, but the most of the work just through precision position control regime. Where, uh, you know, all these sci-fi movies were imagination, like, well, we like to have a robot in our kitchens and so on. We have to have a mobile system, which is, doesn't rely on uh, the numbers of bolts and the concrete uh, surface. So you have to re, uh, figure out how to balance, stay balanced, and to figure out how to control the forces because you have to interact with a lot of stuff. It's an, and loose, it's not really known. So uh, I will show you what I've been working on last 10 years uh, and then how we implement. Uh, as uh, the Professor Jumori talked about this, uh, when we start, first started the Cheetah robot, nobody thought electric motor can produce such a high power and dynamic robot. So I will show you those uh, examples. Uh, this is Cheetah 2. Uh, Cheetah 1 was uh, uh, early on, like two, two, three years early on, but it wasn't be able to balance. The balance controller wasn't there. Cheetah 2 was be able to run uh, about 60 meters per second using only 60% of power. We couldn't actually use the full power because the controller wasn't good enough. And at the time, the first time we uh, achieved a running jump, I think this is, we're still the only one who could do this uh, in the world at this point. Uh, the using LiDAR sensor detect obstacle autonomously and then adjust a step and then run the real-time optimization to jump over the obstacle. This is Chira 3. Uh, this particular video really shows uh, how important uh, the proprioceptive uh, sensing is. So this robot actually is blind. You can sense uh, the ground uh, difference and then you can actually adapt this controller. And uh, thanks to our custom motor, um, our robot uh, could be able to jump on the table. Actually, the electric motor is about 100 times more powerful than uh, human muscle. Yet, if you implement a real robot, it's not nearly as good as a cat. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, things we have to do right. Uh, simple answer is actually the high powers are typically available in high speed, uh, which is not the case in the car industry, but in robotics case, uh, we really need the higher torque. Um, and getting uh, speed is actually relatively easier. 
This is a, uh, our most recent uh, control algorithm. Is our, it's called the regularized uh, model predictive control. Um, it's the detail is too long, so I, I wouldn't explain here. But uh, uh, what my former PhD student figured out how to really um, do the online, offline uh, modification, learn it's some sort of, you can think about it as a slow type of learning on our cost function. Our cost function never be right. We have to really understand how cost function should be properly tuned to achieve what human wants. What human wants is never going to be very easy to quantify. Uh, our cost function easily just set up as some sums of square of some state. They're never going to satisfy what you want, which is typically run well or the very stable. Those kind of concept is very difficult to quantify. Uh, this part, uh, we're showing some preliminary work on vision integration. Uh, vision integration has been pretty slow because, uh, first of all, we're not expert on the vision. And uh, uh, vision system break down very easily when robots move fast because we're always working on fast robots. And uh, there are amazing progress in sensors, so hopefully we can make our robot more agile uh, being uh, being aware of the environment without just uh, so far we've been mo mostly working on blind robot. Um, the key idea about uh, proprocept actuator uh, uh, two thousand since two thousand nine uh, at the time most people thought like hydraulics is gonna way to go uh, is it's actually just uh, maximizing torque density and then minimizing uh, the mechanical impedance. So in, well, the most important part is actually inertia. I'll talk about inertia a little bit later. Idea is actually inspired, primarily inspired by Ken Salisbury and his students' uh, company, Phantom. Phantom is a haptic display device and it is uh, fantastically designed to really minimize the inertia of the end detector uh, operation space math matrix uh, so that you can actually display the, uh, the force sensation without any feedback. There's no force sensor feedback. So uh, we thought that, well, that's probably the best way to generate ground direction force and high bandwidth. And the high bandwidth is very, very critical in uh, most uh, manipulation in, in, in locomotion as well. So I'll explain why inertia. Uh, if you think about a robot body, you can apply the same idea in the manipulation, but uh, uh, this is primarily for uh, mobile robot, because mobile robot is floating body. Uh, body usually try to create a force to the body uh, through the ground direction generation, which is a red uh, arrow. But you know, you have always think, have to think about there's a inertia through the the linkage system. Your your leg. Our oh, legs are not that heavy. Well, legs are not that heavy. That's true. But the motor reflective inertia of the motor basically is actually uh, dominate in this in this world. So if you generate try to generate some force. You have to actually deal with this uh, intermediate inertia that connects your body to the ground. So if you try to command certain uh, force, uh, and if you hit something pretty hard, you will see that discrepancy. You can see that red uh, is a real force, and then the blue is uh, what we try to command. The difference between them is basically the inertia force. So inertia is higher, the difference is higher and higher. Um, so, but if you uh, think about why this can be that high, uh, the the rotor inertia actually is a ninety percent or ninety five percent of the of the total inertia uh, compared to the linkage. Linkage system sometimes is like almost negligible, and the friction. Typically, as I said, the, we need a higher more torque, so we typically have a lot of gearboxes, and the gearbox, uh, the the friction. Actually, it's typically is a torque dependent friction, a force dependent friction. It's not like a Coulomb friction, you sit on the uh, gravity and then this force is determined by the, the gravity. We are trying to apply higher force and those gear transmission and all these bearing actually cause a higher force, which means your uh, friction force act as a, another inertia, which is the worst when it comes to uh, contact because in high, uh, you know, the bandwidth contact, uh, what you see is mostly impact and then high acceleration. And high acceleration, there are no other inertia, uh, the impedance parameter matter except inertia. So uh, if I show in slightly different view, if this is body, this is rotor inertia, and then leg, it looks like the leg is heavier than rotor inertia, how small, how big uh, the rotor, actually the, through the gearbox, your real rotor inertia looks like this. Now you might be able to imagine when you have a high impact, you're gonna break one of those gears or you will break the leg because of the large inertia, not because of the high mass, it's all because of the inertia. 
So if you, uh, there are a couple of important messages here is, uh, uh, you know, the mass inertia is the most important part. And in the very low gear wave system like the MIT Cheetah case is the, the inertia contribution from the rotor and then inertia contribution for the rest of the system, like all the leg combined is about 50, 50. So if you, the, you know, the gear ratio is about like a hundred to one, that become almost like a 90 to one, uh, nine to one. So your rotor inertia basically dominate. That just like uh, make our end effector very, very heavy, even though your the legs are all made of carbon fiber. So I'm trying to uh, highlight that the back drivability is, is the very important, but you know, back drivability the terminology is such a, a very abstract terminology. There's no quant proper quantification. So we actually come up with a better uh, terminology, primarily uh, focusing on the inertia, which is called the impact mitigation factor. Impact mitigation factor is nothing but uh, operation space matrix, but it's properly normalized. So uh, if you think about the system, uh, the like a cheetah, and then uh, if you think about the n vector, n vector mass matrix, and uh, you can think about high gear ratio, low gear ratio, like a, almost a drag drive. Uh, the if you think about the really really bad case, uh, the high gear, extremely high gear ratio, you can lock all this joint, and you can think about a locked case inertia, which is the same as a uh, um, uh, the mass matrix re react on the linear uh, body coordinate. So you can actually compare your real mass matrix uh, and your worst case matrix, mass matrix that you can normalize to really quantify how backdrivable your system is in terms of inertia. Uh, the reason why we have to normalize is because you cannot just compare like a 10 kilogram robot to 100 kilogram robot or like, you know, uh, like a two gram robot. You cannot really compare like, oh, throw the mass matrix and you cannot really compare that. Some systems have a very low mass, uh, mass matrix, but is no, no, not backdrivable at all. Some system can be very high uh, mass matrix, but it's very well backdrivable. So this is a pro most proper way to quantify how uh, backdrivable your system is compared to completely non-backdrivable uh, version of you. So that's a uh, IMF, and then uh, it's much better uh, way to quantify the system, how well it can uh, impact on the system. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the spring, the no system uh, is built without a spring. There's spring everywhere. You know, our robot has a uh, transmission has spring. There's a foot has a spring, but the, uh, if a spring is in a, a spring is always slowing down your system uh, in terms of bandwidth. So uh, we even though spring not ha ha having spring can actually reduce efficiency, like a Bram's talk. We hope that we can have that in, in the future. But at this point, we're so busy uh, balancing a robot and we are prioritizing our controller. So we really try to minimize uh, stiffness uh, given the robot is, uh, 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 is not breaking. If you have a zero stiffness uh, spring, is, you're gonna, your robot is going to break every time hit the ground. So we need to have a, some compliance, but uh, we're very carefully mi uh, minimizing compliance so we can maximize the stiffness of the leg so we can actually uh, achieve a high bandwidth controller. So you can see that uh, the bandwidth is dropping very quickly. One example uh, with the data, this is Chira 2 running on the force plate and you can see our X, X force and then tangential force and uh, vertical force are controlled uh, within about 80 millisecond. You need to have some perspective. 80 millisecond is most of the robotics lab is just an accident, just a hit something. But we have to actually control a proper impulse in X direction, Y direction within that short period of time because that's all time you have. I can give you an example, much bigger system like a human running on the jogging, your ground time is about 100 milliseconds. So that's all time you have. And also you can think about it, uh, your other situation when you're manipulating your object. Think about how long your each finger is actually in contact is very short. If you don't think about the high bandwidth interaction, you cannot achieve anything like a human interacting with the environment. Just think about how long it takes to grab a handle and open a door. You, 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 most human do is like about 300 milliseconds. And then we have a, a several uh, decision making happening. Uh, our, our robot is never really uh, think about the energy efficiency, but this is a, a cost of transport chart, uh, uh, flyers and runners and swimmers. Ashimo is the one of the you know landmark achievement, but the uh, because efficient, the gearbox is so high, uh, the ratio is so high, the efficiency is not very good. Hydraulic robots are about uh, two order magnitude, or at least order magnitude, the worst than animal level. 
And human is actually pretty good, as everybody knows. And cheetah is actually, we thought it's a sprinter. It's actually not bad. It's 0.4. It's pretty good compared to other animals, same weight. You cannot compare COT without considering the weight because it's all the weight dependent. As you can see, the COT is going down as it get heavier. Our cheetah robot is actually almost the same as the cheetah. It's in between cheetah and the sheep. Uh, it, it's, uh, despite that it's a, a, a direct, almost like a no spring system. In the future, once our control is better, if you start adding spring store energy, I think this can actually beat even human or uh, so some can grow. Our really uh, internal target is actually can grow. Can grow is amazing because it's spring. So uh, if I show you some, uh, uh, some representative like uh, uh, the robots in quadrupedal, mostly quadrupedal world. Uh, I don't have any uh, special quadru the, uh, selection here. The red robots are our robots, and uh, the blue robots are series elastic. There's only two in CTH, and they're, the greens are hydraulics. Uh, by the time we start ro building a robot, uh, the world was uh, uh, dominated by hydraulics, mostly by the Boston Dynamics, but other uh, uh, countries too. And after we show that electric robot can be dynamic and the reactive and then very efficient. And now if you look at the uh, China and US and many countries are all uh, following our proprioceptive concept. And then only hydraulic robot, effective robot left is uh, a humanoid. Having th authority something degree freedom, uh, the electric motors have a disadvantage. So uh, we'll see. Uh, at some point, I think uh, everything can be electric. I'll show you some uh, uh, on pr uh, published work, the che mini cheetah uh, on trajectory optimization. These are all offline trajectory optimization, uh, working on like combining uh, several different dynamic behaviors. Uh, so we can, I will just skip some time, uh, stop because of the time limit. Uh, this is... You can, we start mixing uh, jumping and uh, side jumping, side flip, uh, uh, jumping and spinning, for example. We can jump and spin at the same time, uh, spin and roll. We're, we're trying to achieve basically uh, combine multiple different ballistic behaviors. You can go over a rough uh, train uh, locomotion much more effectively. It's very similar to the Berkeley uh, Salto idea. Like you can just jump over and then uh, minimize your uh, contact location. You can actually go over a rough train without worrying too much about this complexity of the controllers. This is one of the ideas. So we'll start working on this. I'll skip to the uh, the contact sensor. I'm trying to point out that there are several groups in the world trying to really achieve a uh, high impedance, uh, high uh, IMF, low low mechanical impedance hands so do the many uh, dynamic behavior. I will sh quickly show you um, the CMU version. Uh, CMU hand is very low uh, high IMF, so you can actually handle impact. You can react, uh, smack and snatch behavior is possible because of the high IMF. And Yongjie's hand is also pretty impressive um, in terms of the low uh, high, low inertia, high IMF. So you can react really quickly. I will show the last part. Uh, we are working on teleoperation system uh, when we can actually sense all the fields through the uh, our proprioceptive actuation. But uh, we need to have a sensor. So we actually have a sensor technology that uh, allow us to measure X, Y, Z forces and contact a location. And uh, that actually allows us to do this uh, virtual magnet demo. So uh, some might wonder what kind of algorithm is running. This algorithm is actually one line algorithm. Just one line algorithm allowed to do this like uh, uh, following uh, and then controlling force very quickly. Robot has uh, no idea where my hand is and whatsoever. There's mo no motion capture. It's all proprioceptive actuation and then uh, very good uh, robust uh, X perception contact. Uh, because of time, I'll uh, try to just uh, explain very short. This is my hand is uh, picking an apple blindly. I'm not looking at it. Uh, my just, I let my hand just uh, think and then it re react. Each decision making is very bad, but humans are very robust to achieve uh, something very complex. You can see about 0.5 seconds, humans are uh, making 
uh, the, be able to make a, like a four or five decision making and then achieve the very complex task like this. Uh, we need, really need to think about how to achieve uh, uh, like the robotic system that can help like our elderly uh, population society uh, in the future where, where elderly population is gonna expand really well. And then this, if you look at those delicate uh, contacts, it's very critical to develop our robotic system so that we can actually make our society uh, bright in the future. So that will be uh, end of my talk. Uh, I hope we can have a, a offline discussion. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Sangbei. Have a round of applause. And please, uh, folks, type your questions in the Q&A. And Sangbei, if you can uh, give us another couple of minutes and answer folks directly in the Q&A, that would be awesome, because we don't have time thank to you. do live questions anymore. But thank you for, for, for the presentation. Uh, and 